Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorials on the quantum well. This is video number five. I'm going to talk about converting sine and cosine to complex exponentials. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. The previous video to this was number four, where I talked about solving the Schrodinger equation. And just to say once more, that was, I suppose, the uh, that was a mix of a lot of other videos I've done or the, I suppose, the conclusion of a lot of other videos I've done. So there was definitely a lot of information in there, because uh, it's, just, it's just, I suppose, the conclusion of a lot of other videos. So if it was a bit too much, you know, feel free to go back and look at my, my playlist on solving second-order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because in that particular video number four, I showed you that the general solution to, we'll say, our wave function, which is a sec uh, having solved the, uh, so solved the Schrodinger equation, is going to be something e to the alpha x times a cos beta x uh, plus b times the sine of beta x. Now, just to remind you, we said that our characteristic equation had roots uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2. But each of those, let's say just look at lambda 1, it can be written as alpha plus beta, where alpha was the real component and beta was the imaginary component. So for each of our solutions to our characteristic equation, we had a real and an imaginary solution. And therefore, the general solution to our wave function turns out to be this. For e to the alpha x, a cos beta x plus b times the sine of beta x, where, of course, I'm assuming that it's a function of x. All right. Now, I also said to you that if there are no... If there are no imaginary solutions, so beta is equal to zero, the sine of naught is naught, so that disappears. The cos of naught is one, so that basically disappears, and you just get these real exponential solutions. If, however, you have no, if you have no real solutions, then e to the alpha x becomes naught, and you just get these trigonometric cos and sine solutions. And that's usually what happens. You can, of course, get a mix between them, but it's usually either there are no imaginary or there are no real solutions. So we like working with exponentials because they're really easy. So for that reason, when we get completely imaginary solutions, which turn out to be these trigonometric functions, we want to be able to turn them into exponentials. And I'm telling you that the trigonometric functions, cos and sine, become complex exponentials. The, uh, the hyperbolic functions, cosh and shine, actually become real exponentials. And that, however, is just an aside. So this all comes down to Euler's equation. And I've put a link to the proof of Euler's equation on my, on my website. You can have a look at that under the playlist of quantum wells. So this is Euler's formula. And it's, it's strange. I'm not going to do the proof now. But let's just accept it that you can go from a, a, a complex exponential to this real, co real cosine, but this imaginary sine. And you can go from this negative complex exponential to real cosine and the ne negative of this complex sine. So, from now on, I'm going to rewrite this as follows. E to the i theta is going to be cos plus i sine. Let's put it right in that way. And e to the minus i theta is equal to cos minus i sine. All right? And going from these trigonometric functions, cos and sine, to complex exponentials is actually very easy. All right? So what happens if I add e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. Simply that's going to be cos plus i times sine plus cos minus i times sine is equal to twice cos. Or what we can say is we can rewrite it and say that cos of theta is equal to e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. Done. Next, let's subtract them. We're going to have e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. That's going to be equal to cos plus i times sine minus cos plus i times sine is equal to twice i times sine. Rearranging, we can get the sine of theta is going to be equal to e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta divided by 2 times i. All right? 2 times i. So, that's, that's, that's really it. Um, one second there. Yeah, that's really it. So the point here is this. You can go from real trigonometric functions, cos and sine, to complex exponentials 
using Euler's formula. The important point to note here, by the way, is that sine has this uh, is has this in the quotient. It's got this. It's got iota or the square root of minus one. So that can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So it's something to be very aware of. All right. So by adding the Euler's formula uh, and subtracting it, you can get the formula for cos and for sine. All right. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.